Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 21 of Direwolf20's Omnifactory series, where today I am making hardened upgrade kits. One, two, three. Haha. <laughs> hardened upgrade kits. Booyah. You guys can go away. That gets me three of these bad boys. There's a reason I'm making these. Uh, I, between episodes, I thought I'd try and upgrade some of my stuff. Didn't go as well as I had hoped. So now I'm choking on power a little bit, as you can see. Uh, so boop, boop, and boop should give me a nice boost in power. And there's another augment I'm going to throw in here. And you get two more augment slots per, which is pretty awesome, honestly. Uh, you know what else I need? I need to replace... Not you. Not you! That's blue, right? And that's orange and orange and orange, yes. I need to replace you. Because uh, at this point, I think we're getting pretty close to having more uh, energy. See, that's, yeah, we had 512 as a limit here, now it's 2048. Nice! Um, so between episodes, I did a couple minor upgrades. One, remember we got better batteries going on? Medium tier batteries? I think the tier of the battery actually affects how much power can go in and out of this thing as much as the tier of the machine. So um, what I did is I said, hey, let's upgrade our blast furnace with MV input hatches, which I thought was a really smart idea. Um, and, and, and it was cool, but boy, does this thing need a lot of power now. And I don't see an overclock disable. Uh, so he needs a lot of power. Uh, he, needs, he needs quite a bit of power um, to, to, to keep things going. So... Um, so I, then I put the batteries in, and that helped, but now, like, you know, I need more power. That's really what it comes down to. So are you done, Dark Steel Plate? You are. And are you almost done? You are. Good. Dark Steel, Dark Steel Plate. So the other thing I wanted to make was this uh, augment here. Boop. Boop, 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 boop. Three of them. So this is the augment for magmatic dynamos. Greatly increases power generation and efficiency. Coolant is required for operation. Cool. Hey, guess who happens to have coolant available to him? This guy named Direwolf. Quest complete. That was a quest? I had no idea. What quest was that? I got this one claim. Hey, who's shooting at me? There shouldn't be any bad guys coming down here. Did I? Oh, I did. I might have had a few water spills here and there. Um, so what I'm thinking is we could lickety-split get this reservoir thing going back here. How's that sound like a cool idea? Boop, 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 boop. Um, and those were easy enough to make that I can make more than one of those, uh, easily as needed, right? That was no big deal. I should really get a Feral Flare Lantern going on, and then I wouldn't need torches everywhere, and that would be even cooler. Um, I took a quick stop over to the nether because I had to get some more blaze doohickeys going on. Because I needed... Hey, you do that thing. Cool. Alright, so you guys can get one, two... Wow, power output potential goes from 180 to 450 with that. <whistles> that is cool beans. So you don't insert, extract, always active. Nice. That's a ramp up in power if I've ever seen one. Booyah. That is cool beans for sure. Uh, how are you doing? Are you guys full? So why are you only plus 222? Two, two, two? What is draining so much power that you're only plus 222? Two, two, two? It might be... Oh, this guy's... Okay, yeah, that could make sense. Um... I must have taken a battery out of here at some point. Lithium. Yeah, we'll use the lithium ones. You know what? I've got enough. Let's make them all lithiums in there, right? Do I have another? Do I have another dark spot? Let's just light up there and that might help. Must be a dark spot somewhere hiding out. Must be, right? So these lithiums are just a little bit better than the sodium batteries, which is cool. 
and then you guys can also clean up. Neat. All right. So now my curiosity, so we could also throw another augment in there, right? Because we do have another augment slot in each of these. You get two augment slots unlocked per tier upgrade instead of one. So that's kind of a cool Omnifactory specific feature. Uh, I like that a lot, actually. Pretty nifty. Uh, can I let you run again without too much trouble? So this guy should be expect accepting. So see how much faster he smelts? He's making energetic alloys right now. Look how much faster he is. How great is that? Right? So we've got these guys, and I've got medium voltage current running over to him now. Um, so he's on my MV line. Uh, you may notice that my LV wires are gone from here. Pro tip, MV wires and LV wires connect to each other, and when you do that, bad things happen. <laughs> Some bad things tend to happen when that happens. Uh, spoiler alert, yeah. Don't don't connect. Like, I knew that happened, and it was actually like I was I was trying to avoid it, and I failed to avoid it. Um, so do we have any 4X? No, but do we have LV, red alloy, and tin? I thought I made more of you LV cablings, but maybe I didn't. Maybe I did a bad job of making you, or maybe I left. Uh, here's some energetic alloy cables, so that's cool. More MV cabling. Um, yeah. So part of the reason I was doing that was I wanted to, like, ramp up my production of stainless steel and aluminum. Um, but things should be better now. And I'm kind of curious to see how fast these guys are. Hopefully it's like super quick as well. Wow, that's pretty quick. Look how much faster it's smelting aluminum. That's actually a big speed increase. That's a huge speed increase. Uh, bumping these MVs, that's pretty awesome. And I don't even think we're feeding it as much power as we could. Like, look at that. That's empty on OU or on EU, right? So uh, that's a thing, 100%. I think that's why we might want the 16x cables. If I had 16x cables, this might be even faster, which is cool. So I can put away my old energy input hatch. Um, I'm probably going to need a few more rod, uh, conductive iron. So let's see, where are we at here? Yeah, so let's put away the coins that we got. Let's put away this random bow from a mob drop. Um, I guess I need more conductive iron. I think I'm going to make 16 of you. You know what? No, I think I'm going to make 32. That's probably a smart move. 32 more of this stuff, and I'm going to pop you up here, and hopefully you'll... If you're if, if I'm lucky, it'll go right. If not, we'll see what happens. I'm making more steel, because I used a whole lot to make uh, some of the upgrades I just made. But hey, that's a lot. Are we having a net gain right now? No. See, it's a net loss right now. But it's not as much a net loss as it was before. <laughs> um, so all the aluminum smelting up there is draining a lot of power. But uh, I think we should be all right. Because it, it should quickly process. Right? Uh, yeah, like we've already made a dozen of this stuff. That is definitely cool. That is definitely cool. So let's hold off on stainless steel for a minute. And let's look into uh, what else we got. Oh, you know what I was supposed to do between episodes? Make interfaces. I got, I got tied up trying things and I was supposed to make interfaces but yeah we need um do I have more logic processors so what I would love to make is more interfaces I'd like to make a few of them so that I can get patterns going right um so didn't I add you I thought I hit a on you right um and then I need robot arms which is going to need a bunch of stuff so very quickly, I should be able to. How am I for MV machine holes? Not terrible. So you know what we need more of? We need a lot more aluminum. That's really what we need. So let's throw another half a stack of aluminum dust in here so we can continue the processing of that. Holding off on stainless steel for sure because we're totally going to need more aluminum. Um, yeah, definitely needing more aluminum. All right, let me craft this off camera. I'm going to make, let's say, two of these, and hopefully that'll be close enough. No, I'm probably going to need at least four. Yeah, let's make four of these and see how that goes. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back and I've got interfaces. Yay! I think one of the first things I'd like to automate if we can is the electronic processors, right? Uh, those are needed for patterns, specifically. So, like, if we got the first tier electronic processor and we added this to the to-do list, right? Is this the right one? Yeah. So that's, like, a lot of steps, right? Um, so there's a lot of things that we need to get here, but we need like this one and then we need this one, right? So we need a lot of these, but I think automating this process would be one of the first really nice kind of low hanging fruit 
options for automation, um, which will lead us to being able to make more patterns. Uh, other things I'd like to be able to automate are interfaces. So if we can add that to the uh, automate list. So that means like we'll probably have to do LV machine holes, which we can do in here with a machine casing and some polyethylene and some copper cables. So that might actually even be cheaper than what we already do. Can you go in here as well? Yeah, just eight aluminum plates. Nice. All right. So the assembler is definitely going to play a role in a lot of what we do because the assembler makes all these things, right? So having, debating whether I want like a dedicated assembler or how I want that to work, but that's probably something we're going to want to look into. And maybe an MV version of the assembler would be cool, right? So MV machine holes would be nice. Um, and then the other thing we need for the interface um, is like the robot arm and the pistons and the motors um, and like the aluminum rods and some of the cables. So let me get started thinking about all the different things we need to do here and we'll be right back. All right, guys, uh, we're back. I'm doing a little bit of house cleaning. Um, trying to clear out some space in here and make things a little bit more efficient. Check out this cleverness, right? I've got the same ender fluid conduit feeding the ender tank and the reservoir into the same side of the magmatic dynamo and it works pretty well. How cool is that? So I moved my uh, sugarcane farm over to the corner, which I feel like is a pretty good spot for this. He doesn't have power at the moment, but I'm going to eventually run MV cabling over there and make that an MV distillery and brewery so we can get lots of that stuff going on right uh we probably want to relocate some of this junk um but we'll get to that eventually maybe i don't know um but over here i think is where i want to set up some of these automated machines so i'd like this wall and i'm going to keep this window open here because i totally turned off my farm and never gave it more power though he seems to be doing just fine um so yeah that's what's up Okay, so one of the more tricky things to get going at this point, which we're going to need more of than patterns, actually, is the interface. Because remember, we need an interface for manual crafting recipes. So like this pattern, right? That'll The interface will hold like nine of those, but that, so that's cool, right? But like when we want to make aluminum plates, we're going to want to do that in the compressor. So that's going to need an interface, right? When we want to make logic processors, that's going to need an interface. When we want to make Fluix Dust, that's going to need an interface, right? When we want to make, right, all these things are going to need interfaces, right? When we want to make aluminum rods, that's going to need an interface. When we want to make uh, copper wires, they should be able to be doable, probably right there. But there's going to be a, a few assembler recipes. There's going to be a lathe recipe. We're going to need the electromagnetic polarizer recipe, right? So, like, each of these is going to need an interface. So we're going to need a lot of interfaces to get started to make more interfaces. Uh, so I may not even have enough with the four that I have. Um, but let's get started with dropping one right here. Should be cool, right? I don't even know that I need that cable anymore. So that's cool. So now we have one interface at least, right? And then when I look at this guy, nice. Interface terminal's working. So let's let's come up with a list of machines that we need to get through this. So I think organization is going to be key. So I'm trying really hard to be organized down here and think ahead for what we're going to need. Um, and I might do a bad job of that. I will, I will readily admit that I'm probably going to fail at, at, at thinking ahead properly. Um, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. So I'm thinking we're going to need more energetic alloy. So let's cook that stuff up. And that should smelt pretty quickly. And our power production should do pretty good at keeping up, right? Um, so that will probably drain some internal buffers. But that's we're going to be cool. Uh, so let's, let's get our machines going, right? So we're going to need... A compressor right so I'd like to have advanced here for probably most of these at least for now like yeah we could get into the HV but I might as well do the advanced here and I think I'll try and borrow and use some of the existing machines I have like I already have an advanced compressor upstairs I'll just bring that down right um, but there's other things I don't have the advanced here of right like so this is gonna need just that yeah so we're gonna want the assembler that I don't have an advanced here of so I want to get that going um, and you know what we're probably going to need is the advanced version of the fluid extractor or something like that, right? Advanced fluid extractor? Yeah, that's what we need to turn, you know, stuff into stuff, right? So that's, we're going to want one of those. So these two I don't have yet. The compressor I do. I'll probably want an advanced lathe for sure, right? Uh, what else is involved in this guy? So there's, uh, so we're going to need like the tier two circuit going on. So that would be this one. 
So that's also going to be an assembler and a fluid extractor combination. So that's pretty good. You're going to be an extractor combination. I can do that. I can pump copper into a fluid, dude. Yeah, I think that's doable. Um, we're going to want to use a, a healthy amount of blocking mode for this. I'm going to try and do as much in the... Because there's going to be a lot of assembler recipes. We'll probably want multiple down the line. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, th I think eventually... So you're going to need... A uh, fluid solidifier or an extruder. Each of you need a specific shape, though. So we might want the advanced extruder. I think I, I've got one of those upstairs already, though. So I'll just bring that down. Um, and and so that's unfortunate because that's a small gear recipe, but we'll figure it out. All right. So that's a lot of machines. Let's see. So I've already got uh, the compressor and the extruder. So let's get these guys. Like I said, we're going to beg, borrow, and steal from our upstairs area. And the extruder. Right? Do I have the small gear recipe? I don't think I do yet. Uh, let's make one of those. So we want the small gear. Which is going to be... I need some steel. Am I really out of steel? No, I have some here. Good. Good, good, good. Good job, Direwolf, having steel. Right? And soon I can just teach steel plates to the auto crafting system. Just saying. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Right? Um, is there a better way to make you guys? Nope. So you totally need a hammer and a file. There, most things can be crafted in a machine. But there's still going to be the odd thing that requires like a hammer and file. And that might be a little tricky. But let's get it going. Raw hammer and file is you. And then this dude here makes the small gear shape. Cool. Okay. So that takes care of that. Advanced lathe, fluid extractor, and assembly machine are things we're going to need next. Right? Um, so we're definitely going to need at least one or two more ME interfaces. We're going to totally need some more um, 4X uh, energetic alloy cable. Because most of this stuff is going to be advanced here. Right? Are you done cooking? You are. Good job. And hey, I made myself another stack of aluminum. Good job, me. I was thinking ahead. So let's get the wire mill cooking here. We might want to put that downstairs too eventually, but all in good time, right? My focus right now, get interfaces auto-crafted. That's my focus. If I can get every step of the interface auto-crafting, that would be awesome. And that's 100% where I want to be. Okay? 100%. So you're going to make what? 48, I think, is what I'm going to wind up with. Oh, we're so close. It's all right, though. It's not a big deal. We now have 48. Cool. So I'm going to make 4x of these. And this process is a little bit slow. So uh, it's nice that I'm going to be upgrading this to advanced machines. So let me craft the advanced machines off camera that I'm going to need. Uh, the lathe, the fluid extractor, and the assembly machine. And we'll be right back. Just giving you guys a little status update on what I'm working on. Uh, I was getting low on these electronic processors, for which I will need uh, quite a handful. So I'm making basically another stack um, of the tier one processors, so the electronic circuits. Make another stack of those. So I'm just doing that off camera real quick. Just to have a bunch of them, because I know I'm going to need them. All right, guys, a whole bunch of off camera crafting later, and I've got a few things going here. Uh, now, how am I for MV power line? Not bad. I think I've got energetic alloys. Nice. So I'm thinking like I'm going to start here with like some of the auto crafting machines can be up against this wall. Does that sound smart? Because it's right near my power line. It's close enough to my ME conduits. Like everything should be groovy to do that. Um, can I can I run you like this? I don't know. We'll find out. So we need five machines here, right? So let's start with that. Like I said, I think it's important that we just plan to be as efficient as possible with everything and be like, try and plan ahead, right? In a lot of series, I'll just kind of wing it. And I'm trying not to just wing it with this one because there's so much, there's so much involved, right? That I feel like winging it would be a bad idea. Right? So we want the lathe, we want the compressor. I'm going to try and put these in some kind of logical ordering, right? The lathe and the compressor, the fluid extractor and assembly machine should go next to each other. The extractor should go here. 
with uh, my small gear, which is wherever it is. Small gear shape. Cool. Uh, and then the assembly machine and the fluid extractor. Now for that, we're gonna need some conduiting, right? We're actually gonna need a lot of conduiting. We're gonna need a bunch of item conduits. We're gonna need some pressurized fluid conduits. We might need ender conduits, I'm not sure. We'll find out. I don't think so though. I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be cool. But we're also gonna want a chest um, because what's gonna happen is we're gonna want to treat these two machines, the assembly machine and the fluid extractor, kind of like we do with the thermal expansions, magma crucible and fluid transposer. Because basically just like, you know, like you would melt 10 redstone into liquid redstone and then it goes into the next inventory and then you put the bucket in there and we always have to do like a chest with an interaction thing. That's what we're gonna do here, okay? So um, basically, right, what we're gonna have is a chest Um, with an interface behind it, I think, would probably be the best approach. And then, do I want the interfaces on top of these guys or behind? Maybe, maybe on top would be the better approach. Right? I think that's probably smart. On top would be smart, so I have direct access to them. Right? So here's what's going to be. Right, here's what it's gonna be. Actually, I don't know that you can be here because I need you to pipe in there. Let's move you. How about here? Yes, that's what I'm gonna do. Cool. So your conduiting is gonna connect there. So you guys should all be online and we can validate that by throwing aluminum in there. Well, no, not that. What I wanna do is remove you and do that. And that's cool. Right, okay, cool. Um, Ignore contents of target inventory. Do not push crafting if it contains items. We want blocking mode probably on everything for this, especially this one, right? So here's how this is gonna work, right? You're going to extract items out of here and put them into these machines, right? And this is gonna be a disconnect. And we're gonna need to filter them, right? So we're gonna need some kind of filters on what's allowed to go into the machines. Right, and I'm, and I'm thinking a basic filter should be fine for now. Two basic filters should be good. And like the first thing that comes to mind is tin. So what we're gonna do is, uh, you're gonna be in on the down as an insert, you're gonna be an insert, okay? So that down, we're going to filter, whitelist, tin. And on you, the down is going to be a filter blacklist tin. Cool? Kind of like we do with everything else, right? So that's gonna be insert, right? The other thing we're gonna do is extract on brown on both of these guys. Always active. And then we're going to insert on brown into this guy. Cool. So he should put his crafting ingredients in here. He's going to extract on green, always active, into the appropriate inventories. And then when they're done crafting, they're going to go back in there. Does that sound cool? And then you guys, um, what we'll probably want is a little bit of item conduiting back here, right? So these three machines, we're basically going to want to extract on green, always active on everything. And it doesn't really matter which one we insert into, so it'll be this one, because I just picked it randomly. Cool? How's that seem? Pretty pretty solid? Pretty good, I hope? I hope that's cool. Um, and I might switch that with a crate or something so that I can put a block above it, because that's a thing. Uh, nice. All right, so now let's practice this recipe, right? So for this pattern, right, we're gonna have to put you in pattern mode, right? Electronic circuits. This is a thing, right? We're probably also gonna need a wire mill down there. That's another one that I didn't remember to account for, but I should probably put my advanced wire mill down there. And I have another interface, so we should be groovy on that. Um, part of me wants to like rearrange this a little bit again. But, you know, things and stuff and shenanigans 
Having stuff behind the walls is a little bit cleaner at the end of the day anyway, isn't it? I should have accounted for the wire mill. That was just Dyer being a derp. I'm going to need a few more energetic so I can run this through the lines. I think I've got some. I don't really have a lot, do I? Uh, give me as much as you can. Thanks, buddy. 15 is enough. Cool. So you... It's only dire wire if you can see it. Is that a valid rule? I mean, you can see it a little bit, but still. It's only dire wire if you can see it. Shh. It's gorgeous. It looks good to me. Right? So, uh... Energetic alloy. Advanced wire mill. Extract on green always active. Interface blocking mode ready to go right so let's get our patterns going and see if we can pull this off right so this is the recipe to make this but it also it also requires a single tin ingot okay and that's going to go in the interface that's on the chest okay cool so that's your basic electronic circuit right um now there's there's definitely some more things we're gonna need to auto craft in here. Like this thing needs to be auto crafted. This thing needs to be auto crafted. This thing needs to be auto crafted. Resistors is 100% a thing that needs to be auto crafted, right? So like, you know, let's let's teach that recipe, right? That that's a thing, right? And that'll also go onto the chest. Cool. Um, can I have a wireless crafting terminal by chance? Wow, that's that's a new icon, isn't it? Uh, do not terrible. Looks like a pretty standard recipe. Ish, titanium. How does one get titanium? I feel like titanium is gonna be my blocker on that. Probably no wirelessnessness for a bit. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, but if I wanted, you know, we have sixty, but like, say we wanted maybe not a hundred, but like fifty more. So you're missing coal dust. So we're going to need a macerator down there, too. There's clearly a lot of machines we're going to need down there for automation, right? Um, clearly, clearly, clearly. Um, do we have an advanced macerator yet? It's kind of on my to-do list. Kind of on my to-do list. I've also been making more aluminum because I got, I ran out and uh, we needed more. Get to work, would you, centrifuge? Type something, would you? We're paying for this stuff. Okay, um, I think what I'll do just to like proof of concept test this is we'll make, you know, some coal dust manually for a minute and then we'll go from there. Cool. We're also gonna have to get more coal at some point. That's another thing we're gonna need to do. Oh, you know what else we need to do? Fluid conduits. So not the ender ones. I think just these would be fine. So this guy's down can be extract Oh, no, wait. Uh, fluid is going to be extract always active, and this guy's down. Fluid will be insert. Cool. All right, so you're cool. Let's put you in here, right? Um, so these are the circuits that should be craftable now. What are we missing? Well, we have everything we need. Cool. So can I request, like, four of you? I can. We have everything we need for that, which is nice. So you get to work and we're gonna pop down here and see what happened. So you're extracting fluids, you're putting items in, you're making the circuits. It's working guys! Oh, I'm so excited, it's working! It's working! I'm very excited about this. <laughs> yeah, it works. It works! All right, I know it's basic auto crafting 101, but it works! It works. That is what's up. That is what's up. Whew. Okay, cool. So like if I wanted a bunch of those, and this is how you test if things are really working, right? What don't I have auto crafting, right? Fine copper wire, capacitors, phenophilic circuit boards. That's gonna be, this one's gonna be a little tricky because that, that needs this liquid over here. That's gonna be a little tricky to automate, but we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We will get to it. We'll have to probably do something with fluid um, storage and transfer. 
in applied energistics. But the basic components are there, right? Now, if we wanted to combine this dude, right? Let's get this pattern taught, right? So that should be cool um, with a piece of tin, right? Because this guy actually needs a tin ingot. Cool. And you go into the chest. So now if I want a processor, Booyah. That's what's up. It's working. Automation, my friends. Automation. Let's get the tier three one in there. Right? And that is also going to be a piece of tin. Okay. Into the chest we go. Okay. Um, and then let's see processor tier three. Right? So we need aluminum plates and eight phenolic circuit boards is what we're missing. Not a problem, right? So first thing we want to do is teach you aluminum plates, right? So that's going to be this recipe, and that's going to go into the advanced compressor. Now the phenolic plates we already said was going to be tricky, right? Um, but we can get 20 of those real quick in our chemical reactor. So some of this stuff is obviously going to have to be manual for a little bit until we can ramp up production, right? That's That just kind of goes without saying, I think, right? I think we, we know that, like, automating this, while not difficult, I don't have a ton of coal. So, like, you know, there's that. Um, how you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Cooking, cooking, cooking. Cooking, cooking, cooking. So I can only assume that what's going to happen here is it has some crafting to do to get all this ready, right? Um, so let's go downstairs as soon as we make this craft happen and see what happens, right? So if we wanted the tier three processor, right, that means you need to make three more electronic circuits so that you can make another electronic processor array that is, or eight more basics so we can make three more electronics so we can get that. All the auto crafting, go. Cool. And then you might be cooking at some point, Mr. Advanced Compressor. I'm not sure. Maybe after this is done, that'll happen. That is cool, dudes. It's it's actually happening. It's actually working. Just want to make sure nothing gets stuck. We don't break anything, right? Shouldn't. Shouldn't. I think we're making more resistors now, so that's cool. This guy's going to have to come to life at some point. Nice. That is cool beans, dude. Look at that running. Are we choking on power or are we cool? We should be cool. Nice. At some point you're gonna come to wake and make aluminum for me, right? Maybe you already did. Good job, dude. <gasps> Dudes, that is awesome. All right, so now that we've got these guys auto-crafted, next up, interface. So I'm going to drop a bunch of you dudes in there. Pretty darn close to being good. More interfaces is where it's at, right? Uh, so if I want an interface right now, how close am I to being able to make that? We're missing a handful of things, right, clearly. But we can, uh, we can work towards this. Definitely something to work towards. Between episodes, though, because you know what time it is? Wrapping up point. So here's what I'm going to do. Between episodes, I'm going to do some of the auto-crafting necessary to get interfaces auto-craftable. Um, the only machine down there that I don't currently have that I'm going to is going to need um, the electromagnetic polarizer. Um, I have an LV version of one, so I can either put this down there with like a transformer or uh, I can make a, a, an advanced polarizer, which might not be a bad idea, just, just because. That's, that's, that's an easy enough recipe that I can pull that off, I think. I can pull off that recipe. Um, it looks like I can't, but do I want to put empty machine holes in here? Probably. But let's do this first. All right. Wrapping up point for the episode. Dire Wolf 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We are well on our way to automation, guys. Um, automate all the things is about to start, right? Now it's going to be a matter of resource production and, and, and auto crafting completion and setup. All right. For now, Dell 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you're excited as I am. Take it easy.